A lot of people are looking for deals right now. It's understandable. We all like deals, and when you read the news about home values dropping all over the place, you would think there are a lot of deals to be had. But the truth is, the majority of the triangle is still in a strong seller's market. The average months of inventory for the entire triangle is 1.8 months. That's about the amount of inventory we had in June of 2020, and that was a pretty hot real estate market. So does that mean that there aren't deals out there? I've said before that real estate markets are local. National numbers don't tell you what's happening in Raleigh, and we have to dive deeper because not all Raleigh markets are the same either. So I went deal hunting for you. At first, when I started to dig into the individual towns, I was blown away. I found a town with 10 months of inventory. Just a month ago, that same town had just over two months of inventory. I'll be honest, I was really confused because that is big. Are those YouTubers right? Are there huge swaths of inventory just waiting to hit the market and crash all of the prices? I've always been of the opinion that builders' memories are just not that short. Most of the people in the building industry literally lived through the 2008 crash. They're not gonna do that again, right? But here's this data staring at me in the face. What does it mean? Here was my first theory. Maybe these were all ghost listings that didn't really exist. I've shown you that type of thing in the MLS before. It's not unusual for builders to list properties that haven't been built yet just to test the market before investing in the construction. I've seen as much as 25% of new construction inventory be these ghost listings. They're actually called pre-sales, but I think it's more fun to call them ghost listings. Anyway, I'm telling you, these builders are not dumb. And then I remembered something that I had read recently about a large production builder that has gotten itself into some trouble, and I thought they might be using the triangle market to get itself out of it. Did you see this headline recently? KB Home says that 68% of their contracts were canceled in the fourth quarter. It's true. And now I'm seeing a lot of inventory from KB Homes in this particular town. Were the two connected in some way? I had a theory, but I had to put in some calls to test it out. Hello, thank you for calling. They must be busy. Now, I'm going to tell you what I discovered and how my theory was wrong, but first let's take a look at the four towns in the triangle where inventory is spiking so you can see what I'm talking about. You've heard me say this before, but a housing market is generally considered more favorable to buyers than sellers when inventory exceeds six months on the market. Right now, there are four towns in the triangle that meet the definition of a buyer's market. You're more likely to find your deals in a buyer's market. If that's what you're looking for, it makes sense to start your search where there's higher inventory. The first town we're talking about is Lewisburg. Lewisburg is a town in Franklin County, which is just north of Wake Forest. Lewisburg's population is only 3,000 people, and it's actually the county seat of Franklin County, which tells you how rural this area is. Even though it's small, Lewisburg is just adorable, and it's about a 50-minute drive to downtown Raleigh. If you need a Target or other big, bigger shopping, Wake Forest is 25 minutes away. Lewisburg also has the only two-year residential college in the state. Well, Lewisburg, okay, lots of trails, lots of uh, opportunities to get out in nature, which is really great. Um, I love feeding the deer that's around here. As far as downtown Lewisburg, it's growing. And, yeah. You know, everybody obviously closed up for a while. But we have 210 Nash, we have a, a sports bar, we have all the stuff you want for drinking. I don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people do, though. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got our college right down the street mm -hmm. here, so that's always fun. A couple things Lewisburg has going for it is, first, it's a river town. The Tar River runs right through the town, very close to the downtown area, which creates lots of possibilities for future development. They should definitely do that. The Tar River actually empties into the Pamlico River at the coast. Presumably, you could kayak all the way to the Atlantic. Secondly, the median sale price of recently sold homes in Lewisburg is $260,000, which is pretty darn cheap. Although there isn't a ton of that type of older inventory available because currently under contract properties are averaging 327,000 and there's a lot more new construction in that mix. A month ago, Lewisburg had about four months of housing inventory, about twice as much as the Greater Triangle area, but this month they jumped from four months of inventory to six months, which knocked them into a buyer's market. The next town on our list is Anger. Anger is on the southern side of the metro area, sitting just southeast of Fuquay Verena in Harnett County. Andrew has almost doubled the population of Lewisburg at 5,700 people, and it's only 27 miles from downtown Raleigh, which is a 34 minute drive without traffic. One of the biggest things Andrew is known for is Sunny Skies ice cream. This is not just an Andrew thing. People drive from all over the place to go to Sunny Skies. Another thing you should know about Andrew is it is country.
when restaurant bathrooms look like this, you know you're in the country. The median home price in Anger for homes closed in January is $369,000. 83% of homes on the market are new construction right now. And Andrew has six months of inventory. Zebulon is on the east side of the triangle and it's about a 26 minute drive to downtown Raleigh. This is the only town on our list that's actually in Wake County. Zebulon is kind of like a little sister to Wendell. It's about four miles from one town to the other. Wendell's downtown really started to develop with the growth of Wendell Falls. And Zebulon is a little further out, but it's almost a little bit cooler than Wendell. I started digging into this town for this video and I realized that there's enough for a whole video here, so I'm gonna work on that because there is definitely a story to tell about Zebulon. I'm actually have a class that starts at 2.30. I'm just waiting for two of my students to get here. <laughs> I realized outside gardening just isn't for me, um, but then I started collecting um, clearance plants from like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, and one plant turned into 250. Wow. I'm in the workshop back here. Mm -hmm. But the other day, I think it was Wednesday, Thursday. There was a knock on the door, just like you guys, it yeah. was a ABC 11 or something. <laughs> They're okay. like, what is this? From Raleigh, and they came in and they wanted to find out what, what is going on in Zandula. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right now, though, I'll just say that the median home price is $375,000 for homes that closed in January, and 73% of homes that are currently listed are new construction. Zebulon has 8.3 months of inventory. And finally, the biggest question mark in the collection, Rollsville. This is the town that currently has 10 months of inventory. Rollsville has been a mystery to me for a while, but I haven't taken the time to really investigate it until now. Rollsville is currently about 10,000 people. It's about a quarter the size of Fuquay or Holly Springs. It's less than half the size of Clayton. It's even smaller than Wendell, but for some insane reason, Rollsville's median home price is $625,000. That's ranking up there with Cary and Holly Springs and Chapel Hill. Now, I'm not super quick to call something a bubble, but those are some high prices for a community so far from everything. But then again, did you ever see my video about Saxapaha? Condos selling for $400,000 for one bedroom condos. That is really weird. There's nothing else there, just these one bedroom condos. Look at this, okay, I wanna live where gardens are like this. There we go. Talk about high prices in the middle of nowhere. When you see stuff like that, there's always an explanation underneath. And so I started digging into the details. Rollsville's inventory is almost all new construction. Why are builders building this very pricey inventory in such a rural town? Back to my theory. The theory was that all these listings were pre-sales. We've talked about this before. Builders list homes in the MLS that don't really exist, so buyers know that this is a home that could be built on this lot. Then buyers come in, they pick their finishes, and construction begins. This allows builders to balance their inventory so they don't build more than the market can bear. My thought was that KB Homes was trying to recoup those fourth quarter losses by offering lots in a higher priced area while not actually putting money on the ground. But that's not what it was. 553, 439. Yeah, yeah I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the MLS. I'm just wondering which of these 10 properties are not pre-sales. I called all the builders and all of these properties are gonna be ready in the next 30 to 60 days. These homes actually do exist. So why are KB Homes and DR Horton building in Rollsville? The reason prices are so high is because there is virtually no older inventory averaging out the prices. Rollsville, kind of like Holly Springs 20 years ago, was nothing and developers decided to create a suburb. They built up higher end communities like Granite Falls and developed the great amenities to go with them. And now they're working on building out the town just like Holly Springs did. Unlike Holly Springs, I'm not aware of any incoming tech or biotech companies that will provide the salary structure within the town to support this price point moving forward. It does seem from their economic development website that this is what they hope to do. Whether they'll entice companies to the area remains to be seen, but we will keep our eyes on things. Is the inventory in Rollsville indicative of a bubble? 
There's reason to believe that it isn't. Follow me down this path as I set the stage. First, there were four closed sales in the last 30 days. Now remember, those are backward looking sales and so they went under contract in the previous month, which was December. Right now, there are 37 homes active on the market, so that makes it look like it would take almost 10 months to sell off that inventory. But don't forget, we haven't looked at currently under contract homes. There are 16 under contract. All but two of those went under contract in January. In other words, four times as many homes went under contract in January than in December. And this is not unusual. The weeks from November 1st until Christmas are notoriously slow. They always are. And then it picks up in January and then springtime hits hard and people start home shopping. I think the builders are just stocking their shelves for the rush. Apparently, the builders believe there will be a rush and they're putting their money on the line believing these homes will sell. These were homes that were likely started in November and December during the slow times. They they were certainly started well after interest rates hit 7% and the market slowed. These are not homes that builders got stuck with. They believe sales will continue to increase as spring wears on, and this plays out in all the other towns as well. 12 homes went under contract in Zebulon in December, and in January, 50 went under contract. In Lewisburg, 3 went under contract in December, and 12 in January. In Anger, 4 went under contract in December, and 20 in January. So on average, there were four times as many homes that went under contract in January as there were in December in all of these towns. The builders believe that sales will continue to increase into the spring and that's why they're building. If you like this video, you might like this one about whether the triangle housing market will crash in 2023.